Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to create a scatter plot using technology, primarily Microsoft Excel. This is our fourth video in the applications of statistics series on bivariate data. And in our previous videos, we created a scatter plot by hand. Now in this particular video, our focus is going to be for year 10 in the Australian curriculum and also for senior mathematics. Particularly in Queensland, we're looking at year 12, general and essential maths. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would you use technology to draw a scatter plot? We're going to cover that briefly and also talk about some of those limitations of technology. Then I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to use Microsoft Excel to create a scatter plot. I'm going to take you through how to set the data up, how to add titles, how to change the scale, and also how to add a trend line. And then finally, I'm going to show you some examples of real student scatter plots that have been done quite poorly. So let's get started and talk briefly about why we would use Microsoft Excel to create a scatter plot, and we can do one by hand. Well, firstly, it does save a lot of time when we're using large data sets, assuming that we've already got a digitized set of data. So if you had to draw a scatter plot with, say, 50 or 100 dot points on it, that would take you a very long time, whereas Microsoft does it literally in the press of a couple of buttons. It also can reduce that element of human error, especially when you're trying to place points between uh, parts of an axis, like trying to place it between the number one and two, for example, and get that accurately placed. Microsoft does that for you very accurately. It also can be used in an assignment to confirm the accuracy of a hand-drawn scatter plot. So if you've drawn one by hand, and then you put the side-by-side -side Excel version with the same points on there, and they're all matching, you can use that to confirm the reasonableness of your results. So in those PSMTs in Queensland, that can be a very important part of your assignment. Also in senior mathematics, so don't worry about this if you're in year 10, but if you're in senior, you'll be calculating Pearson's correlation coefficient, R, and also the coefficient of determination, R squared. And you'll have learned in your mathematics program that that's a very long process to do by hand and Microsoft does it literally in the press of a single button. So that is a one very compelling reason why we would use technology. Now, limitations of technology are very important to be aware of. Technology is not necessarily perfect. There's an old statement from the 70s, and this shows my age here, garbage in, garbage out. So if you put rubbish data into your spreadsheet, then you're gonna get a rubbish graph. It's really important that the information you put in creates the output that is I'm going to be useful. So we'll talk about that a little bit when we do our first part of our demonstration in Excel. Also very important to be aware that a trend line is not the same as a line of best fit. We talked about lines of best fit in the previous videos. And just to recap that, that is a hand-drawn line that is drawn with your best judgment, trying to place the line with the same number of dots approximately above and below the line. And it's great because we can actually discount outliers or anything that we see that doesn't seem to fit the pattern. We can use our human judgment, but a pro computer program doesn't do that. It is based off an algorithm or a formula, and it uses the least squared regression line formula. So you're going to learn all about that in year 12 mathematics. Don't worry too much if you're in grade 10. But basically what a least squared regression line does is try to place that line at the same distance from each dot. And that can be a problem if you have outliers which we, as I mentioned, you can discount those using your human judgment, but a computer can't do that for you. The other reason why I don't like to rely on technology all the time, and this is probably more of my mum hat or my maths teacher hat on my head here, is because when humans rely on technology for too long, we start to get lazy in our thinking and then we can't even do basic calculations. I do see students on a regular basis who've been using calculators from a young age and they don't know their times tables and they can't do simple things like addition and subtraction in their head. So relying on a calculator to do those basic tasks for us slows us down in exams. And also that laziness means that we then have difficulty grasping more complex calculations and being able to interpret their results. So I'll take the mum hat off now. Let's have a quick demonstration in Excel and work out how to draw a scatter plot. So in Excel here, I have actually created a um, table of some imaginary data of math students' results um, for a fictional class versus their business grade, because I teach maths and business. So for example, this first point here, 0.61 and 0.86, that actually represents that one student achieved 61% in maths and 86% in business. 
So it's very important to remember when you see bivariate data that each piece of information belongs to one person. So this here, 0.61 and 0.86, belongs to one person or one thing. And then the next line down belongs to somebody different. Now, what I do see students doing before they start creating a scatter plot is think that they need to sort the data from smallest to largest. And that's a big no-no for bivariate data. And the reason for that is this, if I sort that maths column from smallest to largest and then sort the business column from smallest to largest, what I'm effectively doing is taking one person's maths grade and putting it with someone else's business grade. I'd be taking the person with the lowest maths grade and matching that up with somebody else who's got the lowest business grade. And that's not useful at all because what we're trying to find here is if there is a relationship between maths and business. Now, I understand why you would want to sort. You need to sort if you're going to find the median and the interquartile range. But I would highly recommend you do that in a separate spreadsheet. So let's focus now on creating a scatter plot. Notice I'm not actually going to highlight the headings. If I use the headings to highlight the data and create the scatter plot, what I'm going to end up doing is confusing Excel a little bit about where the words belong. I just want Excel at the moment to focus on the numbers. If I click on the insert menu, and then come across to approximately the middle, I'm going to find this button here, insert, scatter, X, Y, or bubble chart. If I just click on that once, it gives me a few different options. This is the one here that I want, the first one with just the dots. If I move across to some of these other ones, they're a complete disaster. They're basically joining all the dots, and that is not what we want to do at all. Okay, so let's click on that first one, and I'm going to make that one just a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, if I want full marks in an assignment, I need to make sure that I have chart titles and access titles that are meaningful. So let's firstly change our chart title. I simply double click on it and it will highlight the words and then I'm going to overwrite those with maths um, versus business grades. And then I'm going to put in here grade nine and we'll make up a year 2010. And then I click away from that and I've now got a meaningful title. It's important not to just regurgitate what's on your um, X and Y axis, there's got to be some context of the date and who the people are that you've collected that data from. Now I want to add some access titles because at the moment you'll notice I don't have access titles. So let's click back on the graph again, come across to this plus button. And if you drop down here, notice that the access titles has not been checked. So let's check that box. And now it's inserted access titles for me. So let's double click on that first one there. And we're going to call that maths grades. And we're going to use a unit of measurement. That's important as well because that tells people what these numbers mean. At the moment, you can see they go all the way up to the number one, and that's because they're percentages. But these are grades out of 100. So business grades. Out of 100. Oops, can't type. And we'll delete that old title there. Okay. Now, our next step here is you'll notice that all of our data is bunched over on the right-hand side. Now, we've got all this empty space underneath, all this empty space on the left. What this can do, especially when we've got very closely bunched dots, is it can actually give us a false impression of the correlation. We want to get a better bird's eye view on that. So we want to get rid of some of that empty, white, wasted space. So the way that I do that is, once again, I'm going to click back on the graph and I'll just get rid of this little box over here. And you'll notice that the plus button's here again. I'm going to click on the plus button and I'm going to come across to the word axes. Now, if I highlight that there with a grey box, you'll notice that this little arrow comes out the side. And if I click on that and click down to more options, I can actually choose the boundaries of my axes. So notice here the minimum at the moment um, for my axes is zero all the way up to one. I want to change that so that it goes from 0 0.3. And if I click back in the space now and get rid of that box there, now I've got a lot of that white space removed. And I can repeat that process down here for this space as well. The last step I want to show you in Excel is adding a trend line. So come back to this plus box. This plus box is going to be very important for you. And if you come all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a trend line. I click on that now, it's inserted that trend line or that line of regression. I can also come out to this little arrow over here on the right hand side, click on more options down the bottom, and then if you scroll all the way down, I can display the equation on the chart, that's also very useful, and if I'm doing senior, display the R squared value on the chart. Now, finally, what I want to do is move that out of the way, 
I'm just going to move that over there so that it's not in the way of my points. Otherwise, it blocks the points and the teacher can't see what you've done. So now that I can use that equation, that least squared regression line, and I can compare that perhaps to an equation that I've determined from a line of best fit and talk about the differences. Now, it's very important, once again, that you understand that this is not a line of best fit. So there will be differences in your equation to the one that you've determined. Okay, let's go back out to my presentation. And we're going to have a quick chat now about some students' work who've done the wrong thing. Now, in this particular case, they were asked to present a scatter plot. They've actually clicked the wrong box and given me a column chart. So be very careful. Make sure you're actually choosing the right option to start with. It's not a scatter plot. Secondly, this student has sorted one of the columns. Remember, we talked about that a few moments ago, not to sort from smallest to largest. They've sorted the physical activity, and therefore, they haven't actually understood that what they've done is separated the physical activity out from the screen time. So they've got everybody's information is now jumbled up. Also, we've got this one here. They've done it, both data sets, from smallest to largest. That is not a scatter plot. So they've basically shown that screen time is definitely lower in one year from the next year, but they haven't actually presented if there's a relationship between physical activity and screen time at all. They've completely missed the point. In this particular one, notice that I've handwritten in there on that student's work, hours. So they've got screen time versus physical activity, but they haven't actually put their units of measurement in there. So it doesn't give you the complete picture with this particular graph, and they would have lost some marks for that. Student E now has used a black background, and that makes it, well, it might have been pretty, it might have been coloured when they put it together in their assignment, thinking they were doing something fancy, but it makes it really hard to see. It's quite hard on the eyes. Also notice that there are no access titles here at all. So um, we've got the letters ST and PA, but that's not particularly useful to anybody. And they've also missed off the units of measurement. So I've scribbled that on there too. Student F has used a legend. Now, we didn't talk about this earlier, but you don't need a legend for scatter plots. And sometimes people may want to plot um, two data sets against one another. And what I mean by that is they might have um, for example, female screen time versus um, physical activity and then male screen time versus physical activity and they want to stick it all on the same scatter plot and then they're going to put a legend on, they're going to have different coloured dots for girls and boys and it's, it looks like an absolute dog's breakfast. You really can't tell the correlation for females or males when they're all on the same scatter plot together. So it's a good idea not to do that, rather present it graph side by side. There is no need for a legend when you're using scatter plots. In this case here, they've got a completely weird legend going on that doesn't even make any sense. Now this one here, remember we talked about that scaling and using that white space correctly. This one here, they haven't taken that white space out from the left-hand side and moved their axis over. So what that does lead to is a misleading conclusion. Looking at that trend line, you can see all those dots are very close to the to the trend line. So with using your eye and your judgment, you might say that correlation is quite strong. However, as you can see, R squared is 0.47. Now we'll talk about R squared in later videos, but basically that means that the correlation is fairly moderate to weak. Okay, well that's all we have time for today. I hope this has been really helpful to, to you. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to draw a scatter plot in Desmos. So there's a little bit more to that. So do stay tuned for the next video. And the best way to stay tuned is to like, then subscribe to the channel and click the notifications button so that you hear about all the upcoming things we're doing here at McClutchy Maths. Also in the other upcoming videos, we are going to talk about Pearson's correlation coefficient, the coefficient of determination, finding the equation of a trend line using linear regression. That's going to be a big one. Um, using the calculator to calculate it and also solving some complex problems, which will hopefully prepare some of our seniors for their external exams. Well, thank you so much for joining me again. I'm loving hearing your wonderful comments and the feedback that I'm getting. And this is a photo that I took recently at the Gold Coast, a beautiful place. And for all of you in sunny Queensland, have a wonderful day.